The Curlewis Golf Club has secured its water future. This is the Halcoa Point Henry Complex, just out of Geelong. I'm here at Port Art College where the girls are getting right into the closing the gap. Good evening and welcome to New Geelong here on this Friday evening. The Surf Coast Council has been working to develop a new vision for the Bells Beach Surfing Recreation Reserve. It will be used to guide the updating of the coastal management plan for the weathered limestone cliffs that dominate the landscape along a two mile stretch of coastland to the southwest of Torquay and Janjuk. Ian Nichols has the story. It's not the first time that News Geelong has been to iconic Bells Beach on the surf coast and it won't be the last either because it is in the news. Its future is very much at stake. There's been a lot of consultation, not only with local residents and ratepayers, but with surfing community and anybody with an interest in the environment. And today we're lucky enough to be talking with Rowan McKenzie from the Surf Coast Shire about where we're at right at this point of time. Of course, Bells Beach, this iconic place on earth, is very close to you, Rowan. It is, that's right, Ian. It's, it's a very special place for many people, including um, the Surf Coast Shire Council. Well. More importantly, we have a vision for the future, and Bells Beach does have a future, and as a result of that, we've had lots of public consultation, we've had lots of meetings, and at least we do have a vision for Bells. That's right, Ian. The, the Bells Beach Task Force has worked with the community to develop a vision for Bells Beach and a, a, matter, a set of matters to be considered. And what we're doing at the moment is we're, we're running a series of workshops with the community to expand on that vision and those matters to be considered and to develop those into the new coastal management plan. Well, we know that part of that vision was to respect and protect the natural environment, also the indigenous heritage, and of course the surfing culture, which comes alive around Easter here, as we all know, with the Rip Curl Pro. And uh, there's a lot to be considered, isn't there? There is a lot to be considered, and, and um, I mean, surfing happens here all, all year round, but the reserve is under a lot of pressure from uh, you know development and uh, in, in surrounding this area and from even from the natural environment and from climate change and it's important that we we respond to that pressure and that we we try and make the reserve resilient and strong so that we can protect those important values of the reserve well we know that the shire uh, the surf coast shire wants to get it right and as a result of that it's been a fairly protracted uh, episode we had one public meeting on the weekend yes and i'm sure that uh, some of those ideas were put forward there oh very good ideas uh really really uh good strong involvement and I think that's been the case right through this, this consultation process. Uh, the community's been fantastic, uh, the stakeholders have been fantastic, lots of great ideas and uh, well, I think we actually are developing a, a sort of agreement or a sort of a, a, a sense of agreement I think about the future of the reserve. Well yes, there must be a little bit of an edge between commercialism and keeping it in a more pristine condition. This is the coastline around Australia, let alone this iconic part of the world. That's right. So it's 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 all about keeping bells the the wild and pristine as pristine as we can can make it. That's really the the paramount um, the values that we want to protect at bells. Now we must tell people, and you don't necessarily have to be a resident of the surf coast. Anybody with an interest in bells is able to put forward their ideas. There are two more workshops coming up. November 11 and November 18 at the Grant Pavilion right behind the council chambers. In Torquay, that's right Ian and we yeah we encourage anybody to come along they don't have to be local surfers but um, we're sure plenty of local surfers will will, will participate uh, but yes yeah, certainly anybody who's got a love for bells and has wants to make a contribution they're welcome to attend. So once those public consultations have ended what's the first thing we tackle after that? Well, once they're done, we, it's really about bringing all those ideas together and turning that into a strategic plan, the coastal management plan, which will then uh, will then re-exhibit uh, re backwards to the community early next year or sometime next year. I'm not sure when it'll be, actually, but no. we've re we're really not time-dependent too much here. We're really, it's more important to get it right than to try and uh, jam it all into a sort of a tight time frame. Well, there's no doubt this is the, a beautiful part of the world. It's world famous, and as a result of that, we see tourist buses here almost on a daily basis, and that has been an issue that you've had to contend with as well, from uh, giant uh, 
you know, luxury uh, road cruisers to uh, just little mini buses. Has there been any problems besetting you on that front in recent times? Well, we now only allow the smaller, uh, mostly local tourist operators to come in. It's much more sustainable that way. And we still have the odd larger bus coming in and we're, we're seeking to better control that into the future. Yes, well, everybody wants a piece of the action and that's why you're taking this very uh, protracted uh, exercise in getting it right. And we do hope that people will come along in November to the, and you can check it out on the Surf Coast website as well for further information. At Bells Beach on a very windy midweek day, this is Ian Nichols for News Geelong. Thank you, Nico. Well done. Free Wi-Fi has arrived at Whittington Link, where you can make yourself comfortable using your smartphone, your iPhone or your tablet, selecting free Wi-Fi, geelonginfo.net. If you're connected, enjoy, as Merrill Friend files his story. We're here at Whittington Link for the launch of the free Wi-Fi access. Over the next 12 months there's going to be several workshops that are going to be held around the region and in East Geelong to help people learn how to use the internet, how to be safe and how to get the most out of it. The first workshop will be here at Whittington Link with the Flame Fest on the 31st of October from 4 till 8pm. Really special day for the Whittington and East Geelong area with the free Wi-Fi access starting here at Whittington Link. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, it's fabulous. So um, what the um, ABS statistics in 2011 told us that less than 54% of people or homes in Whittington are connected to the internet and we know that more and more people are needing the internet to... Um, basically live your life. Uh, more and more things are being connected so it's fa fabulous that we've now got free Wi-Fi in the Whittington link. So it's 24-7 for anyone to use at any time. And so if people are wanting to find out more about this, um, how can they, they get in touch with you or others? Yeah, definitely. They can get in touch with myself or any of the organisations that are around the primary school and the Ballerine Living and Learning Centre, the kinder. They're all part of um, a group that supports all of this as well. So, um, but yeah, definitely they can contact me if they want to know more about it. All right, so they've got the free Wi-Fi hotspots around the spot. How are they going to find out how to use it? What have you got in store? Um, can I get the card and show you? So today we've got to come and try the Whittington free Wi-Fi and have a coffee and a muffin and sit down and enjoy it. But unfortunately the weather hasn't been good to us. But what we're doing is handing out some cards to people, free Wi-Fi. And on the back it's, it's pointed where the free Wi-Fi is, where people can access. And simply bring, bring your equipment and go to your settings, select Wi-Fi and then select uh, free Wi-Fi Geelong InfoNet. So it's as simple as that and today we're showing people as well how to do that. Uh, so hopefully spread the word. <laughs> so over the next 12 months you're going to have some workshops that are helping people to figure out how to go online and how to be safe as well? Yes, so I'm uh, managing a project called Communities Accessing Technology and the project is mainly in the Whittington, East Geelong area and we're running uh, 10 pop-up digital workshops over the next 12 months and we're trying to engage people in technology so we have some partners on board Geelong Regional Library who will be our IT experts and they will come along with lots of different equipment that people can have a play with and um, some different phones that they can use um, we've also got good money coming along who can advise people on low interest loans we've got consumer affairs who will be talking to people about how to avoid scams, how to stay safe online. Um, and we'll be having lots of raffles and food and fun involved with that as well. So the main thing is just to get people to try and get them connected. Because really, unless you are online these days, you really are limited in, in your access to a lot of things, aren't you? You are. And the other thing that we will be um, advising people about is where to access free Wi-Fi locally. So there's not only free Wi-Fi, in the Whittington link but there's free if you join the library up at Newcomb that's free um, and there's a couple of food places in in the area in Newcomb that are free have free Wi-Fi as well and we'll be letting people know where to access local community training on computers and where where there are other computers that um, they can use for free 
and access the internet as well. From Whittington Link, Meryl Friend, News Geelong. Thank you, Meryl. Make sure you get connected to the Wi-Fi free out at the Whittington Link. So we'll go to a break here on News Geelong. We'll return with more after this.